मिस्टर जोहार सरकार थैंक यू सर एज आई कॉन्ट सी एन ए क्लॉक आई होप माई टाइम स्टार्ट नाउ सर the first point that i would like to make is across the house 21 we minutes are in, we are indians first and as an indian we take immense pride <coughs> in the chandrayaan mission we take immense pride in the scientific achievements of india irrespective of what part of india we come from what we represent that is the first basic point that we have to remember india is a continuum india is eternal and we cannot slice a part of india and say this was my part and all the credit happened during this part all the discredit happened during that part we were all part of a continuum when we talk of chandrayaan mr jairam ramesh has explained in great detail the chair also has explained in great detail the whole journey of chandrayaan and that it pans for 6 decades and more numerous individuals have contributed to it today is a time when we need to remember them we need to celebrate the moment but we also need to remember our history we also need to celebrate history so i'll begin with what where mr jairam ramesh said the great contribution of pandit nehru to the whole episode to the whole journey as indians no one can deny i do not i i am not speaking parochially no one can deny the immense contribution of the man who introduced scientific temper in india the man who introduced all forms of scientific research vikram sarabhai yes, yes. we have come to a new house and there should be a new approach instead of only political leaders we should celebrate the images the statues of vikram sarabhai of abdul kalam of homi baba these are the ones who took us to where we are we have to admit that it is this the great leadership the great vision the unending toil of homi baba of satish dhawan of uh, vikram sarabhai of abdul kalam where where we are to devote we are abdul kalam where we are today we also cannot acknowledge or disacknowledge or deny the role played by the prime ministers the present prime minister must have surely contributed to this great journey but that does not mean that earlier prime ministers who laid the path did not contribute and should not be forgotten as an indian my heart leaps when i see our space launch vehicles propel the satellites of other countries and place them in space we do a big favor to the rest of humanity to other nations and my heart leaps but my heart is big as an indian as a person who shares the timelessness of india we should have a big heart the big heart that not only takes uh, space launch vehicles take only satellites but also propels ideas my today my heart leaps with joy for another reason and the reason is that science is finally gaining over superstition science is finally gaining over superstition <coughs> we have to believe in both experimentation in empiricism and evidence before we open our mouths before we open our mouths we must think of the consequences of what we are saying experimentation empiricism and evidence how can someone say that ganesh's head was placed by plastic surgery we had his chaturthi yesterday how we believe in the greatness of ganesh but how can you say that his head was placed by plastic surgery how can you talk of stem cell surgery is stem cell science bringing in the a particular large section in the mahabharata we have to have you have to have both faith in something and faith and 
a strong belief in rationality. Personally, I don't find any great conflict between a faith in something and rationality. Others may, I don't. As an Indian, I can move along with faith and I can also move along with rationality, but I would not ever like to see the date when faith, superstition, and backwardness trample upon the fruits of science. We have to, we have, we have the science minister who comes and says that we reject Darwin. We have another minister who comes and says we reject Einstein. For God's sake, if you reject science, if you reject science, you cannot celebrate science just because the timing was such. You cannot reap the benefits of a timing and then say. We had a science and technology minister who said we discovered the theories of Pythagoras before Pythagoras. For God's sake, you are a minister of the Republic, of great Republic of India. You cannot make these statements. Please refrain the leaders. I beseech of you, please restrain them from making irresponsible statements. A vice chancellor of Andhra University talks about stem cell research. A chief minister talks of Mahabharat, talks of internet and space communication during the age of Mahabharat. Let us from this lesson, let us from this moment take an oath that before we make unscientific comments, we will restrain ourselves, we will stick to science so that we have many more Chandrayans, we have many more Adityas, we have a superior make in India. Uh, since people were talking about contribution, a very important point that we need to remember is that this contribution of Chandrayaan reveals that it is a smaller technolo technological colleges of India that are, in the, that are not in the limelight. Non-IITs, if I may put it bluntly, it is the non-IITs that have landed India into such a glorious position. We are feeding on IITs, but many of the products of IITs are going abroad to serve the interest of world capitalism. To serve the interest of world capitalism, to serve the interest of world domination. Why are we doing it? We need to shift our embassies to our smaller colleges that have produced. Bengal incidentally has sent 31 uh, in the ISRO. We could have said more about it. Now, when I mentioned about superstitions, I also come two small, two spoiler points. We have spoken about the greatness of Israel, but we have not mentioned one word about the Devas Antrik scandal. The Devas Antrik scandal remains alive till today. A few months ago, the Delhi High Court has pronounced a judgment which will make you shiver. They say there is poison in the seed. The entire thing is a poison effort. It doesn't matter to me which regime did it. No regimes get into such great detail. It doesn't matter. We should have closed this chapter. We should have punished them because we remain vulnerable to any international fraud of something like 30,000 crores. Why should we pay it? Just because some technocrat made and made a dirty deal. We talk of the Nambi effect, we celebrate. We can celebrate science, we can celebrate the effects of science, we can celebrate our victories, but do not, as the chair has said, bring politics into it. This brings me to a point where I say that if you want to really move forward with more Chandrayans, with more Adityas, with more progress in this domain, <coughs> free science. Free science. You have, you have made science subservient to the rules of the bureaucracy. You have created departments and ministries of science where you have placed scientists, but the rules remain the same. The rules remain the same. You have to have a separate set of rules. You have to go in for faith. You have to allow them to function, not shackle them with bureaucratic bureaucratic rules. It my heart leaps when I hear that India has joined the six nations for the National Quantum Mission. 
this national quantum mission will take India forward. Whether X regime stays or Y regime comes or Z regime goes, it doesn't matter. This permanent contribution to the quantum mission will take India forward. We should move higher. We already have moved high on the innovation index. In the world over, they look at us to see how much we have innovated, not how much we have talked. How many patents have we filed? This is hard fact. And we have actually gone up, but we need to go further up. This is where the focus should be. The tragic point about Indian science is that even the budget of ISRO has been cut by 8%. The tragic point of Indian science, Indian science, the tragic part of Indian science is that we do not contribute enough to R&D, research and development. It's an international shame. I'm saying, Minister Sirs, it's an international shame because when we make claims, we must substantiate claims. Our contribution of the GDP to research and development is 0.65%, out of which 4% is contributed, 4% is contributed by the state sector, that is the government sector, and only 0.2% is contributed by the corporate sector in India. It is this same corporate sector that you have allowed a 4 lakh crore remission. I am repeating, you have remitted 4 lakh crores by way of taxes from 2019. What have you got in return? Can you make, can you make them contribute half a percent more, half a percent more. When we talk, uh, this is the remission of income tax, what we call the corporation tax. By way of favors, I am repeating the point, that 12.5 lakh crores, I am repeating, 12.5 lakh crores of the bank customers' money has been evaporated, has been extinguished, has been written off to favor, to favor, to favor big corporates. A big corporate who belongs to a political party who was also a member of this house has got away with 5,000 crores. 5,000 crores of remission yesterday. My submission, madam, my submission is not politics. My submission is that this is the type of money, this is the type of money that could get in to help the science sector with more funding. That is all. All I'm saying is don't talk of lack of resources. Say that we have resources, they have gone in the wrong directions, but now that we are conscious of our capabilities in science and technology, in industry, in making India, let us put more money in research and development. And where do we get the money from? I have mentioned already the 5,000 crores that has been remitted. Do not permit these things to go on. We have had a long discussion on, uh, on the space mission. We have had an erudite discussion by Jairam Ramesh, by the Honorable Chair, by the Leader of the House. I thank all of you, but we should have found time, not only for space and the moon, but for also for Manipur. We have had no time at all to discuss Manipur. With these words, I thank you and I support the resolution in favor of congratulating Indian science as a whole for several generations.